Hi, this is Eric Boyce, CEO and Chief Investment Officer for BKA Wealth Consulting, and this is Market Minutes for July 6, 2020. Please see our disclaimer for important information. So in this week's market comments, we really kind of take a step back and reflect on what transpired just now in the second quarter of calendar 2020 and kind of give some thought as to what uh, we might see in the third calendar quarter. So obviously coming off the probably some of the most turbulent three months that we've seen in a generation uh, and perhaps several generations, frankly. But, you know, the third quarter of 2020 starts off at a weaker place than any quarter since World War II as a result of this pandemic. But, you know, we've had a lot of optimism that's been tied to it and it's been manifested in the stock market, which conversely uh, closed out the second quarter with a phenomenal gain of uh, almost 20%, which is the best quarter in 20 years. And, you know, there are a lot of sectors within the S&P 500 that participated in that. Uh, obviously, we know the technology sector has been a phenomenal uh, tailwind uh, for, the, uh, for the market. But also, uh, last quarter, we saw some benefit from consumer discretionary and, you know, to some degree, uh, energy, but coming off the very, very bottom of that. And, uh, but, you know, obviously we've had a lot of uh, a positivity coming out of, you know, the hope for a vaccine and businesses reopening. And that reopening, you know, has borne some optimism and, uh, you know, some supports that kind of could, you know, fuel uh, or lay the groundwork for, uh, uh, for continued growth in the third quarter. But, you know, the economy also has a lot of significant challenges ahead of itself, uh, which, you know, may intensify uh, and have an adverse uh, impact on growth later on this year. Now, we know that, you know, some of the takeaways from the quarter that, you know, we've had this reopening and the hope that maybe the worst of this uh, economic news is in the rearview mirror. I think there's some merit to that. Uh, obviously, we've had some setbacks to the reopening, so, you know, we'll cover that. But we have uh, lingering high unemployment that could erode uh, some consumer confidence. And, and as we know, consumer 65, 70 percent of the economy, the consumer engine has to be moving for this economy to move forward. Uh, and we know that volatility stands always at the ready, uh, driven by news flow, uh, driven by a lot of this uncertainty. The market does not like uncertainty. And so far, you know, with some exceptions, there's been this expectation that, yes, we're going to have a, a vaccine. Uh, yes, we're going to continue to reopen. Uh, and some people feel strongly that, yes, we're going to have a V-shaped recovery. And I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, but there's expectations. And when unexpected things uh, begin to show up at the margin, uh, that's when the market gets unnerved. Uh, so, you know, we, we've got, um, you know, a lot of things. Uh, going for us, and, and you can see it in some of the asset prices. We've got a lot of liquidity in the system. You know, if you look at the long-term U.S. Treasury, the 20-year plus Treasury, that ETF was up almost 21 percent um, for uh, for the year to date. Uh, the Nasdaq 100, which is the largest technology company, they were up 17 percent. Uh, even the Treasury 7 to 10-year uh, bond ETF was up about 11 percent then uh, and then obviously we've seen you know a different uh, bifurcation in uh, performance between the growth oriented stocks which in the S&P were up about 8 percent versus the value stocks in the S&P 500 which were actually down 15 percent uh, and you know some of the things that uh, you know really you'd think in a pandemic would work well for you, people chasing value and dividends and things like that, uh, and low volatility, uh, you would think would, would work, and that just wasn't the case. So low volatility was down uh, over 13%, value uh, mentioned was down 15%, uh, you know, and then uh, below that you had uh, high yield and high, higher quality, which uh, it, it was absolutely, the right place to be from an intuitive standpoint, but uh, people gravitated to growth. And unfortunately, as we sit here right now uh, and assessing things at the, the eve of the, the, the second week of July, that there's just not a lot of breadth in the market. Technology represents 40% of the S&P 500 uh, index and the technology stocks are uh, certainly uh, uh, driving the, the ship, so to speak. 
Uh, and we know that technology was up 15% during the first half of the year. You know, the S&P itself was down year to date uh, about three uh, to 4%, about 3.12 for year to date. Um, the Dow Jones was down about nine and a half percent. Small cap stocks, which really struggled early on this year, uh, were down 14 percent. Uh, international stocks, as defined by the EAFE, the EFA index, they were down about 11.3 percent. Uh, and on the bond side, uh, the Barclays Aggregate Index was down. Was, excuse me, was up uh, about 6.3 percent. But both high yield and the leveraged loan market were down. Uh, year to date, uh, crude oil uh, we know has had a very turbulent year uh, to date, and that is down about 33 percent. Although for the quarter it was actually up about three and a half percent, and uh, so we've seen you know gold uh, have a fantastic year. Uh, people flocking to the, the safety of the metal. Uh, gold was up about 17 and a half percent, and that's coming off a year in which gold was about uh, up 19 percent. So um, some interesting asset returns amidst this, you know, this relatively weak economic backdrop. Uh, but just to kind of bring you up to speed, uh, again, this is data that you probably already know, but, you know, just in terms of the virus, uh, there have been 11.4 million cases of COVID-19 and 2.8 million of those were in the U.S. Uh, you know, even here in our home state of Texas, we had 7,600 COVID patients uh, in hospitals, uh, and uh, you know, we know that the, the death rate is actually sliding lower, and that's this is an important point that sometimes people miss when they look at the average caseload. Again, not to belittle the fact that we're having rising cases, but the death rate amongst those is going down, but uh, disproportionately, 65 years and older uh, are uh, witnessing 80.1% or excuse me, 80.7% of those deaths. And what it's doing, in this resurgence, if you will, is having an effect on our psyche a little bit uh, that, uh, you know, a note uh, from uh, uh, Sandy Leeds, uh, you know, indicated Americans are becoming more pessimistic about the virus and that 64% that dis- think that the disruption will last through the end of the year or into next year, while 35% think it will only last a few more weeks or a few more months. Uh, and uh, you, know, you think about, you know, the areas in the Sun Belt that have had the resurgence in caseload uh, that 40% of the U.S. population has seen reopening reversed or halted, uh, which is which is an important thing to, to take note of. Again, going back to what I said about the impact and the importance of consumer sentiment and consumer spending, that if you have a protracted pullback of some sort, which I don't necessarily believe uh, but if you were to see that, that it would most certainly have an adverse impact on uh, consumer uh, behavior. Uh, but just in the last week, the Dow was up 3.2%, the S&P was up 4%, the NASDAQ was up 4.6% as we closed out the quarter. Um, and as I mentioned, the S&P is down just 3% year to date, which is just amazing considering the drop that we had. Um, you know, we been doing a lot of up and down lately, and that's not necessarily bad. You know, there's positive takeaways, as I've said, negative takeaways. The positive is that the you know economic data has been better than we expected. You know, the employment numbers have come in much better than expected, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, unemployment rate fell from about 13.3 percent to 11.1. We know the Fed is just continuing to be active. Uh, we know a COVID vaccine is being developed. Uh, we feel pretty strongly that the uh, Congress is going to pass another stimulus bill, although I think the texture and the size of which is yet to be determined. Um, but, you know, looking at the market, uh, looking at, you know, er- uh, you know, earnings and, you know, this is still a very fluid situation. But if you look at valuations that, you know, if earnings for the S&P 500 are going to be around 160 uh, next year and, you know, maybe you know, maybe, uh, or this year, maybe 185 or so next year, then, you know, if you look ahead and say, you know, maybe that's, uh, you know, 17 to 19 times, that's not extraordinarily expensive, but that's betting on the come. And that's exactly what the market is doing right now. Uh, and part of the reason why there's so much optimism, uh, the Citigroup Economic Surprise Index 
uh, which had hit a record low in April, has now uh, surged to its highest level ever, which is, which is just amazing. But n notwithstanding that, as we sit here on the eve of, you know, uh, uh, of baseball season, for crying out loud, I mean, there's just known unknowns. Now, will we have the second wave and what's, you know, how big will that be? Will schools reopen? And that's a huge dislocating factor for parents that, you know, that work outside the home, that, you know, they struggle with the notion of having to keep their kids and teach the kids. Uh, you know, will we have a stricter lockdown? Will this, the current environment in the Sunbelt states kind of manifest itself into something greater? Obviously, when will the vaccine emerge and when can we mass produce it and begin to inoculate all of the people that are not first line responders? Uh, and then, you know, another big question, huge question is what's going to happen to small business? Um, you know, we know that the number of open small businesses is down 16% from January, and there's a lot of, I'd say, permanent destruction of people that just have closed their doors, they're not going to reopen. And then, of course, you've got, um, you know, you've got all these uh, unemployed folks that are collecting the extra $600 stipend, uh, which will end this month. And there's obviously some speculation. It's a fairly big political uh, issue right now, but whether those $600 uh, incentives to stay home will be will be extended. In fact, the six hundred dollars that were put in people's pockets was was actually partly an incentive to keep them at home. Uh, and there's a lot of people that want to see that go away uh, to make people you know, to incentivize them to get back in the workforce. But uh, obviously, that's a fiscal policy item. Will Congress uh, extend the that enhanced uh, benefit to unemployed persons? And you know, will they pass uh, some aid to you know, households. Will, will people get another check? Uh, I don't know. Businesses still need some help. And without a doubt, state and local government, which is probably approaching a couple of million uh, folks that have been laid off in state and local governments, uh, tax rolls have contracted because of lower retail sales and other things. So uh, we know that municipalities are going to be uh, struggling. But, you know, the, the, the one uh, I guess the lighthouse in the tempest is that the Federal Reserve is going to stand as the bulwark again against uh, you know any uh, tumultuous type of economic behavior. We know that the Fed is going to stand at the ready. Um, so you know, getting back to the stock market for a little bit and then delving into this, uh, uh, delving into you know some of these other things. You know that this is the S and P's ninth best quarter since 1926, and the fourth best quarter since 1950. Uh, following the 10 best quarters since 1950, the index has climbed every time into the next quarter with an average of an 8% increase. Uh, and the index was higher one year later, following nine out of those 10 best quarters, uh, with the exception of 1987, which we had the stock market crash. Uh, and um, so, but we know that. Um, you know, on, on the valuation side, the top 20% of S&P 500 companies, uh, we talked about the multiple, would be trading about 19 times. Um, but the bottom 20%, and this is the interesting thing, is trading at only 10 times. So the, uh, the, the cheapest stocks are trading very cheap, and we've never had a divergence uh, that big, uh, or at least since the uh, dot-com bubble. And so just a couple other kind of more technical points the, uh, that, that Sandy Leeds has pointed out for us is the insider sales to buys is currently seven. That's a ratio. So there's a lot more insider sales of executives at companies, at publicly traded companies that are filing to sell their shares uh, greatly exceeds uh, the buyers, which is interesting. Um, but uh, the put call ratio, uh, this is a... Uh, a kind of a technical uh, ratio for the NASDAQ 100 is pretty low, uh, which indicates a fair amount of exuberance, kind of eat, going to, you know, going to that insider, uh, uh, you know, maybe offsetting that insider uh, uh, characteristic for a little bit. But uh, we know a lot of companies have cut their dividends. We know 40% of the companies in the S&P 500 have pulled their guidance um, and so that is going to, uh, I, I think, create some uncertainty heading into the third quarter. Um, now, while the market um, 
can certainly remain uh, volatile. You know, what are the reasons why? We know, um, we know that 30 million, uh, we talked about the unemployment benefits, 30 million Americans get that unemployment uh, benefit and, and that $600 and that runs out. Bankruptcy filings for companies with $50 million or greater of liabilities are at their highest point since 2009. The number of corporate bond defaults in the U.S. and globally, frankly, are the highest since 2009. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, we've got a lot of um, turbulence in the corporate financial health. Uh, so we're just going to have to work our way uh, through that. Um, and then, you know, I'll conclude uh, here with uh, some comments about the economy, or excuse me, about the employment situation. Uh, total employment rose by 4.8 million in June. That's the biggest one month gain ever. The number of unemployed people fell by 3.2 million to a total of 17.8 million. That's a lot of people. Uh, total employment is still down about 14.7 million from February. Uh, and our participation rate is about a percentage and a half lower than it, where it was uh, this time last year. As I mentioned before, unemployment rate uh, went from 13.3% to 11.1%. Um, you know, jobless rate is up about almost 8% since February. And, um, you know, we feel that, you know, probably the Labor Department is undercounting those, and I won't go into the technicalities there, but uh, when you look at the areas that have been hit, uh, you know, we've added eight million dollars, eight million jobs since that bottom, which is great news. But where have they been? Those jobs have been uh, when the virus hit. A lot of the jobs that were lost were in, you know, restaurants, bars, hotels, casinos, uh, live sports, and some of those areas that account for like ten to fifteen percent of the economy. Uh, and you know, only twenty percent of total employment were in these kind of uh, related sectors, personal services, retail, transportation, uh, those areas were responsible for 60% of the job losses. And so uh, we know that about three quarters of the jobs added since April, that 8 million job number that everyone's celebrating, that three quarters of those were in leisure, hospitality, retail, professional services, and, and even you know dentistry. Um, so I mentioned that state and local governments are cutting unemployment while some of the service sector industries are hiring. Uh, and, but uh, we know that uh, you know, 8 million people have dropped out of the workforce uh, and uh, you know, the number of people that are, who are unemployed and not expecting to return to their jobs released relatively quickly has grown by you know, two, two and a half million since April. Uh, and half of all new jobs have been uh, part-time since April, too. So just a really, really fluid environment. So I just want to caution folks on getting too hung up on the, uh, on the unemployment numbers because there's a lot to read below the surface there. Just, you know, key takeaways. A lot of the employment that we've gained, uh, while it's all good and it's better than expected, has been in low-wage areas in the service sector. Uh, we've had a lot of jobs that have been created that are actually part-time. Uh, then, you know, obviously we've got the specter of a lot of small businesses, which are really the engine of our economy that, you know, may struggle to come back. Uh, you know, we hope not, but, uh, but you know, even with aid, we know that that's going to be uh, a challenge for some to come back and, and in turn a challenge for them to hire uh, some people. And, and frankly, if they extend the six hundred dollar uh, extra unemployment benefit it will continue to be that incentive for people to, that certainly make less than fifty thousand dollars a year to just simply stay at home and just like we've seen over the last couple of months employers have had actually a hard time finding uh, people to work because people are saying well i'm making more sitting it on my on my sofa uh, so you know we'll have to see how that how that works out uh, again i don't mean to belittle the positivity of the overall unemployment uh, or employment numbers rather, but uh, I think it's healthy that we keep that in context, continue to bear witness over uh, you know, trends in the small business sector, uh, that uh, we can continue to kind of take the market with a grain of salt, knowing uh, that there's, you know, at some point we're going to have a merging, a stronger merging of uh, economic backdrop with market valuations and company prospects. 
Uh, but uh, we uh, urge you to be vigilant and uh, uh, be safe. Uh, and uh, we uh, hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, uh, weekly market comments or, or weekly uh, market minutes, if you will. And uh, we certainly invite your comments, uh, suggestions, and feedback. Uh, you see our information there on your screen, and we hope you have a wonderful week, and be safe, everybody.